Hey everyone, this is Chris Crazy House here, and today on this commentary, I really just wanted to take a trip down memory lane and just maybe have just a, a very lighthearted, fun commentary about the, I believe it's the 29th anniversary of Image Comics. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. But before I get started, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to this channel. If you like my commentaries and my drawing videos and my art videos, make sure you hit that subscribe. And if you like this video, make sure you like it and share it with some folks out there, especially some young youngsters who might not know about this and how important this moment was in the comic book industry. I know the industry has changed so much now that they probably would not believe that there was a time when comic book artists were viewed almost at a rock star level and the popularity of comics was just through the roof. I know it seems kind of commonplace now with a lot of comic books being turned into films, but even so, just the actual medium of comic books was never as popular as it was in the early 90s. I mean, that was just an amazing time in, in my life. I remember, I think I was, so when Image launched, it was 92. And at that time, I was 12 years old. So I was in middle school. I actually just transferred and I was living back with my mother because for years I had grown up at my grandparents' house after my parents got divorced and they had kind of made the decision for me to go back to live with my mother. And I remember going back and, you know, not really liking it <laughs> much at first because it was a, a full house to say the least. And, you know, the only thing that was really my escape at that time was comic books and my art. So they kind of dovetailed and went together. Oh, and, and music. Music was a big part of that too. So those three things together were kind of like my escape at that time. And I, I don't want to make it seem like I grew up in like a troubled home so much, but there was like a lot of confusion and a lot of me trying to acclimate and reintegrate myself back into my own family and uh, going to a different school and trying to you know meet different people that you didn't you had never grown up with or maybe only knew one or two other people and even then the people i knew that went to that new school i was in they we weren't in the same circle of friends so it was just you know it was a, an adjusting period not terribly bad but it took some time and like i said those those comics were one of the main things that kind of got me through a lot of that that art and getting into music because this was also the time where what they called the alternative grunge music scene was kind of picking up as well this is also the 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 golden age of hip-hop and like i said they they call it grunge or or alternative music or alter, alternative rock music but to me it was just rock music really just had a different a different feeling to it uh, outside of the the hair bands that were in the 80s and thus the hard heavy metal bands that existed at the time as well but all still good music I always kind of considered it all kind of one thing I know a lot of people like to have arguments over that but to me it was all one thing and really compared to a lot of the music nowadays it was all great I still listen to that music to to this day but going back to the comic books you know when Image formed, I, I'll be honest and say I wasn't up on it like directly at first when it first started. I had seen some of the comics, but I was so into Marvel comics at the time. I was still getting those. And, you know, we didn't, at least at my age, I was not into knowing what was going on behind the scenes. So I knew of the artists that I enjoyed that were working on the popular Marvel books and how they had, and how they had all left. And I was wondering where they went. Maybe they, I just thought maybe they were just changing over artists. I didn't understand that those guys that I, I really enjoyed had left. And I'm talking about the big seven 
which is Todd McFarlane, Rob Liefeld, Jim Lee, Eric Larson, Jim Valentino, Wolf Portacio, and uh, Mark Silvestri. So those are the big ones that I remember reading all their books at Marvel. I, I love Jim Lee's X-Men. I love uh, Todd McFarlane's version of Spider-Man, and I also I really enjoyed Eric Larson's version of Amazing Spider-Man. He was actually my favorite artist out of that seven at the time. Uh, I, I remember Rob Liefeld doing New Mutants and then X-Force. I, I loved Jim Lee's run on X-Men. I, I really enjoyed Mark Silvestri's run on Wolverine. His, his is one of my favorites. Out, out of all the artists, his is one of my favorites uh, as far as the art style goes. So, you know, I was aware uh, of all those guys, and I just thought, you know, as always, they're just changing over artists, right? But I didn't know that they were taking a chance on their talents and their abilities and actually forming their own company and also doing their own superheroes at the time. So when Image came out, I was not aware of it. And also at this time, there were comic shops, but I did not get the chance to go to a comic shop. There were none around me until maybe a little bit after that. So during that time, the, the comic book boom happened. So that's when comic book stores in my area started opening up. And even then, there, there was a, a bit of a ride to get there. And I remember, you know, going, I think maybe the, the summer before Image really hit is when the, the first big comic book store opened up in my area, right? So, you know, I was still buying books at the convenience store. So at like 7-Eleven or Quick Check or uh, Kmart, just like stores like that, that's where I was buying my comic books. Even like places like Rite Aid sold comic books back then. So that's where I was getting all my books from. And they didn't have Image at the time, so I was a little bit behind the... the the score on that one but my friends at school were telling me about it and you know a summer that summer of 92 is where I went to I was living with my mom at the time but I still would visit my grandparents and I, and I stayed at my grandparents house for that summer and I was working as like a kind of like a, a youth counselor I guess or you know just working at this little summer camp for little kids and helping out doing face paint and stuff like that and just helping out the the bigger the older counselors and whatnot so that's when I really got into image at that time and it was just a, a, a amazing thing to see and just the like I said the popularity of it was just it was bananas like it's hard to describe if you weren't there if you weren't a kid or a teenager during that time you just don't know how popular those comic books were they were selling in the millions and the fact that you could you would know about this and, and you were getting in on the ground level because while it was great to, to love Marvel and DC comics at the time, we still felt like it was something that we were kind of jumping on to later on because it has so much history. This is something that was kind of like came out for us in the 90s and we were at the ground level of. So that felt great to get into that right at the ground level and be able to talk to your friends about it we kind of felt like these were our superheroes you know what i'm saying <laughs> like you know people during the 60s or during the 70s might have said they how much they loved the x-men or fantastic four because they were there when it came out and they always got them this was kind of like our thing <laughs> of course a lot of that stuff would implode later on but you know what i mean just that's just the way we felt back then it was kind of like it felt like it was our stuff and these artists were speaking directly to us. They had everything that young boys wanted at that time. There was no uh, social justice buffoonery in those comics at all. It was big guns, big action, uh, sexy women, uh, big explosions. There's violence. There was some profanity in some of those books. Everything the 12-year-old, 13-year-old boy's mind could ever want was in these books at that time anyway. And yeah, there was no, uh, I mean, sorry to say, there was no, a lot of soft sissy stuff in those comics back then. So there definitely was not, this is definitely an era that I grew up in. That's probably why I'm so uh, opposed to a lot of the nonsense that you have nowadays. And I think 
that comic books nowadays have lost some of that that fun and that excitement and that type of action. There's too many comic books nowadays that really they're just sitting around talking, and they don't. You, there's no action to them. Now I do. I will admit, a lot of those image comics went overboard with that, where they almost felt like there was no substance to it. It was just so over the top. But I understand why they were doing it, though, right? Their influence was coming from. You know, those guys were. It came out in the early '90s, right? So they're being influenced by like the action movies, and the content that came out during the '80s. So you, if you can think about the the action movies, the action TV shows, the science fiction shows, and everything that was coming out during the '80s, that's what they're being influenced by. They weren't just being influenced by comics; they're being influenced by what was going on in pop culture. So. Coming from that, and a lot of those guys, like I said, they're uh, the hair metal bands during the 80s had that kind of aesthetic as well. So that's what they're being influenced by, and that's what they're putting out there. So, so I don't uh, begrudge them that they were they were of their time, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, let's talk about some of the books that came out from Image, the, the initial run that I liked or I enjoyed. I remember. Let me try to think. I'm trying to remember what was the first Image comic I got. I, I think it was, I bought Wildcats number one and Cyberforce number one. Those were the first two. And I couldn't find Spawn. Like at the store I was going to, it was sold out. I didn't get get Spawn until much later. And then like, I think the third one I got was Youngblood. So, yeah, so Wildcats, uh, Cyberforce, and like I said, since they were the the two most popular ones, Young Blood and Spawn, I didn't get to a little bit later. The third one was Savage Dragon, and that's the one I loved the most. Like I said, I was a big fan of Eric Larson. I loved this art style then. I still love it now. And it just, it was, like I said, everything I could ever want. It was big action. He didn't waste any time or any pages. I think all the years of him working uh, at Marvel and other places, he really nailed down that style of action comic it was just straightforward we got a guy who has is a uh, dragon who has super strength and he becomes a cop and he fights these mutants in the city of chicago extremely straightforward uh no crazy origin there really was no origin for dragon at the time it was just straightforward action and i loved it it was like it was pretty pretty much was an 80s action movie if you read savage dragon and like i said i, I really enjoyed it uh, the next one I, I, I really liked was actually uh, Wildcats. I really enjoyed Wildcats then. Like that, it re both Wildcats and Youngblood almost kind of reminded me, I guess, of a more colorful G.I. Joe cartoon or something like that. With, with adding like superpowers and stuff like that into it. So I, I really enjoyed those characters and their designs. Uh, their crazy looking weapons and stuff like that. A lot of them kind of look like analogs of more popular Marvel characters, but, you know, it is what it is. You do what you know and, and you do what's popular and what you're known for to get that, that pop from the crowd. So I don't, I don't see anything really wrong with that. And they're the ones that made a lot of those books popular, like X-Force and X-Men and everything else. So why not do a derivative <laughs> and kind of repeat the same thing you were already doing? So, you know, uh, I'm trying to think what was the other ones I like. I did like Shadowhawk when it first started. That was the one that Jim Valentino came up with about the the vigilante who was breaking people's backs. And then it turned out he was actually a black man. Uh, I thought that was very interesting as well. And we all know Spawn uh, his, was a black man, Al Simmons. So those were some interesting african-american characters i enjoyed the the black characters from milestone more but we'll talk about that in probably a different video but uh but yeah overall i really enjoyed those books and even when the second wave of independent books from image came out like pit the max Stormwatch. i'm trying to think of what some of the other ones i think there's one called wild star that never really went too much further and what were some of the other ones there? Then, then like uh, the the guys at Image started branching out and creating more characters, like uh, Rob Liefeld. He had Young Blood already. Then he created Prophet and Brigade and Supreme. Um, 
And then he had like Team Youngblood. <laughs> started going, started cascading even more. I think Eric Larson and Todd McFarlane were both the most consistent as far as like putting out their books and doing what they set out to do. And I, I always appreciated them for that. They're, they're a good lesson in being a consistent and hardworking artist. I, I appreciate both in that regard. Some of the other ones kind of fell off and not getting their stuff out like they should have. But uh, they were working independently. They were running their own business at the time. And it was tough. And I just rewatched that that documentary that was made about Image. You can go find it on YouTube. You can watch it for free here on YouTube. And they talked about, you know, just uh, how young they were and how at that young age, like Ralph Liefeld talked about being like 25 and he being the, the CEO and employing all these other artists out there. And he, he was very gracious to a lot of them. So I almost can't fault him for some of the mistakes he made because I probably would have made the same mistakes at that age where you, you kind of want to put out this content and you're trying to take care of everybody and do the best you can but it becomes so stressful and things kind of fall apart you know and I, I I couldn't imagine running a successful business like that at 25 so and you know then the, the comics industry itself started to implode it wasn't so much their fault the industry itself started imploding as well from the speculators and once that bubble pop, there's really nothing they could do, right? So, a lot of crazy things happen. That I, I would advise going to watch that documentary. It's, it's almost as interesting as watching any type of movie about a successful band or a successful like company. They they have all the heights and all the drama and all the pitfalls and everything that you could ever want in that type of story. Actually, happened to these guys. I'm actually surprised that they're still cordial with one another at the least. I wouldn't say they're probably best friends, but they're at least cordial to one another and talk to each other and can be nice to each other when they do a convention together, right? So a lot went on in that, that whole scenario. And I, I've heard some personal stories. I won't share all of them here, but I talked to a few of those guys or people that worked with them. And there are some really crazy stuff and nasty stuff that went on. And not, when I mean nasty, I mean like as far as business-wise, like people undercutting each other or taking each other's artists or whatever that was one of the biggest problems they had with each other back then especially between Liefeld and Mark Silvestri and I think even Jim Lee and uh, Mark Silvestri had that issue later on between Wildstorm and Top Cow so lots of crazy stuff that went on back then but like I said I, I still remember it it was a great time for for comics and you know I celebrate the fact that Image is still around and it still gives you that deal where they will distribute your stuff for you, but they do not own it. So it's always going to be creator owned no matter what happens. And I think that's probably the best deal you could ever get in doing comics. I think that's the, the greatest deal you can get. Because if you go to Marvel, whatever you create there is, belongs to them. Same thing with DC. Whatever you create there belongs to them. And they barely when they give you any type of royalties for anything. They, in fact, they try to put out the, the legal hounds if you do something <laughs> that they don't approve of, right? So, I mean, like I said, you guys can go watch this documentary. I highly recommend it. And that story has been told several times over on different websites and whatnot, but the documentary is comprehensive and you get it from the people themselves. So I would definitely say go check that out. So anyway, I mean, you guys let me know what your memories of Image Comics like I said, I have a lot of great memories of that time, a great time in my life. So you guys can let me know in the comments section what's your memories of it and how much you enjoyed it. And, or if you didn't enjoy it or you didn't get into it till much later, or if you're into you're still a diehard Marvel fan or or you might have been a, a Milestone fan because I think the year a year after that, that's when Milestone came out. And I was a big Milestone fan as well, obviously. So I might do a whole separate video about that as a future point. So you guys let me know how you feel about Image Comics and its launch. And that the fact that it's still here after all this time. And all those guys are still alive and kicking, doing work. And, you know, I still follow a lot of them on social media. So it's always nice to see whatever projects they're still working on. Because, like I said, they still meant a lot to me back then. And they still do because they did something that was very big 
for the industry. And then probably the biggest thing you'll ever see in the industry. I don't think uh, that will be repeated anytime soon. So you guys let me know how you feel about image in the comments section. Anyway, Chris Crazy House signing out. Peace.